Hey folks, we're live tonight out in the ranch country north of Edinburgh, not far from San Manuel. This is Highway 1017 right next to us. And aside from the Nats, that's about all that's going on out here tonight. Huh? A fair amount of traffic. But boy, over the weekend, some good rain fell, not just here, but all across the valley. Take a peek at what we're talking about. And if you look at the, the radar, the Doppler estimated rainfall over the weekend, you can see that, that line of heavier rain that stretches from Hidalgo right up Highway 281 all the way up to Brooks County. It includes the area right here where we're standing. Where most areas got about two inches of rain. As I look down at the ground, it's still damp as well. It's not muddy, but it's still damp, and you can certainly tell the difference from what it looked like when we were out here just a couple of weeks ago. So things have certainly changed courtesy of the weekend rainfall. Now, let's look at Doppler now and see where the rain is, and most of it is down to the south at the moment. See a little band of showers south of Star County kind of forming down to the south of the valley. We'll keep an eye on those. Tonight, uh, for the potential to move northward, but the real big trigger for rain is going to be a front that's going to settle into the area later on tonight and, and during the overnight hours and kind of hang out for just a little while. There's the front. It's basically on top of Alice. It's moving through Laredo as we speak, triggering some showers mostly from about Corpus Christi on northeastward. Houston seeing some rain because of this. The front uh, is moving very slowly as well, but it will continue pushing southward and the wind will shift briefly tonight as the front stalls almost right on top of us. Let's watch future track and see what it shows. It does uh, trigger an isolated shower this evening, but I think when the front comes in, that's our best chance for stuff late tonight and early tomorrow. And then the rain chance will linger through the daytime tomorrow because the front's going to kind of stick around for a while. It pushes into the middle of the valley and then it just stops. So showers, even a thunder shower possible tomorrow across the region as the front just kind of sits over the area. Now we'll go forward. Notice by the time you get to Thursday, the front begins the process of moving back to the north, but it's still on top of us Thursday morning. Begins to fall apart, but even with that, the serpents coming from the west, working with the remnants of that front, could trigger a shower thunderstorm Thursday as well. And even beyond that, I think there's a possibility of showers on Friday. So now that the doors are going to swing open tonight for the rain chances, there's a pretty good chance we'll see more each of the next several days. Not a period like Saturday where it just rains you know, all day. It's not going to be like that. It'll be spotty stuff, and, and tomorrow it's mostly showers. And I think Thursday and Friday showers, even a couple of thunderstorms a possibility. But again, it's scattered in nature, not just where the whole valley seeing rain at one time. So kind of gives you an idea if you drive across the valley, you might see rain, then it might stop, might see rain again. That's kind of what we're looking at. Your rain chances there, you see it 40, 30, and 50 for the next three days. Now, there's a bigger picture across Texas. There's the front again. It settles southward. At the same time, an upper level disturbance comes in from the west, and that combination is what gives us this rain chance. You've got two things. You've got a lot of moisture, and then you've got a trigger, that front, that boundary. So that works together along with the upper disturbance to give us that shot at some showers. Now, as we look ahead to Friday, yet another upper level disturbance gets caught up in the flow. That one pushes eastward, and that's what keeps our rain chances in there, uh, at least for part of the weekend. I think there's a shot at least over the weekend as well, especially Saturday. And then next week, the models are a little bit different about what's going to happen. One of the models says we can see a lot of rain Monday and Tuesday. Another model says maybe, yes, a little rain, but not quite so much. So that's what we have to kind of fine tune as we get closer to it. Temperatures across the area in the 80s in the west, 70s in the east, 75 Port Isabel, 79 in Brownsville at this hour. The next three days, high temperatures look like this. After we see the highs, we'll jump forward to the forecast. 80 for tomorrow, 83 on Thursday, then cooler on Friday for that chance of rain going up to closer to 50%. So our forecast for tonight looks like this, about 70 for a low, not a whole lot of wind, and that's why the Nats are out here. East northeasterly winds, not more than about 5 to 12, with a spotty shower or thunderstorm. Then tomorrow, we warm back up, likely back to about 80 or so with the shower or thunderstorm in the area. Really, pretty much anybody's fair game for a little bit of rain tomorrow. The front stalls on top of us. We never get a true northerly wind, so we don't really cool off all that much. So the seven-day forecast shows the coolest day of the next couple, probably uh, as we get closer to the weekend, Friday, but then Monday and Tuesday, spotty showers again, temperatures in the 70s. You move through the weekend, you notice there is that thing on there on Sunday. Don't forget you move your clock forward Saturday night, Sunday morning. Remember, you can get all this information on the KRGV weather app. You can download it to your phone, to your iPad, whatever, to any of your devices, and you can see the forecast. You can look at the radar. You'll be able to track the rain as it moves in tonight. And of course, you'll get the uh, video updates from all of us in the Storm Tracking Center as well. That's it live north of Edinburgh. Tim Smith, Channel 5 News at 6.